between the manifold and this uh, downpipe PT, we're pretty much ready to go to World Time Attack now. Here's an install that I've been waiting to do for quite a while. Not looking good, and it looks like it is coming from my favorite, my favorite spot. We bought this turd of an Evo 6 two years ago and rebuilt the entire car inside and out, including a fully built engine, only to have disaster strike on the dyno. It then sat in our shop for way too long, but it's back now and after a fresh engine build, we are ready to piece it back together better than ever. Jumping right in here, this is the new exhaust manifold that Pete teased you with last episode and this is from Arctech Performance. You've seen us use one of these manifolds before on our Supra build and we were so impressed by the precision engineering, you know, investment cast stainless steel construction of these and how compact they are and therefore how easy it makes to handle all the plumbing around this turbocharged system that we wanted to do that on the Evo. If you go back, you will have seen we used a you know long tube style header on this before, which required a lot of this gold foil up here because the, the tubes were coming up high here. We won't really have to leave that on there. I think we'll leave it on there anyway because it looks cool, but we don't need it in this case anymore because this is going to keep all the heat down low and it's also going to mount the turbo down low. And because they use a reverse mount turbo on this setup, it actually allows for a much cleaner uh, routing of all the tubing. Not as tight a radius bend is required either on these. So it's proven to give you like excellent uh, spool up or very good like transit response and the throttle in a very compact design. Let's throw this on the engine here and you'll see how simple it is to put on here. You know, it's, it's kind of like an OE manifold. That's and the beauty of like, it, man. We're not having to like do the old finger thing, turning the, the bolts with two fingers and all that, right? Like amazing. Be really, really nice. Really clever. And just like that, literally two minutes later, this thing is ready to be torqued down. And uh, I should have mentioned that we did have it Cerakoted, that's why it's black now. And that is a ceramic coating designed to keep heat in the exhaust and not allow it to radiate out. So kind of acts like a, you know, a heat wrap would on a, on a header, just in a much more aesthetically pleasing, lighter, simpler kind of, of approach. It does scratch easily, so you do want to be careful, but uh, that's really the only downside that we can tell as far as the product goes. Here it is, everybody. The little turbo that could, our Garrett G25 550 reverse rotation turbo. This thing is good for 550 horsepower, as the name suggests. And we had this turbo on this uh, essentially same engine setup. And man, was it a spooler. I know Adam LZ runs this also on his Evo 5, and he makes a ton of power on E85 with it. It is really the best size turbo for both spool and like that sub 500 uh, number for uh, a power setup on a two liter motor such as this. Man, do I love a V-band install. You can see now with this reverse rotation, the way this is set up, we still have a little bit of, you know, aiming to do, but this is gonna point perfectly down to our lower charge pipe. And the way the turbo now is placed, before this outlet was like down here and really took a ton of space away from here. Now it, it changes the game in terms of like how the fitment is on this. It's, it's actually quite nice. And here's our downpipe from Evolution Racing Spares out of Sydney, Australia. Ben from Arctech hooked us up with these guys and they built us this work of art, which as you can see, recirculates the wastegate, something we didn't do before. So that's a really nice addition. But more importantly, like you can see it goes from three to three and a half inch which uh, Ben is insistent on doing as close as you can behind the hot side of the turbo. It really helps it perform. So uh, it's gonna be a tight fit under here, but uh, this is actually the exact downpipe that ERS runs on their club sprint winning Evo 6 in World Time Attack. So between the manifold and this uh, downpipe PT, we're pretty much ready to go to World Time Attack now. So uh, let's bolt this up and get it in the container. Well, at first we were like, is this gonna fit? But once we put the V-band on there and we got it in place, it actually fits remarkably well. Like, look at how close the fitment is around here, but it's not touching. For, Damn. A, for a three and a half inch pipe to fit through this space is really impressive. So kudos to the guys at Evolution Racing Spares. They definitely know what they're doing. Well, we just couldn't take it anymore without the high rise header here with the tubes all up here. It just didn't make sense to have the gold foil on here anymore. It looked weird. And we thought, let's try peeling it off, see if it makes a huge mess. But as you can see, it's actually coming off. The Super DI goodness, those yeah. guys are using the good glue. It's impressive, like it never tried to peel on us and yet it's coming off really, really cleanly. So 
kudos to DEI. And you can always come in here with a little stickiness to take a little bit of the bits off. And those are scratches that were there beforehand, so nothing we can do about that. Look at it, DP. It's, it's looking good. It looks really good. Oof. Clean. Time to put a new radiator in, and that's because the old one got destroyed in that engine failure. And we've gone back to uh, what we put in all our cars, and that is a Coyorad. This is their HH series 40, 48 millimeter core, so it is larger capacity than stock, but it is still a direct fit in an Evo four through six. But most importantly for us is the quality of these radiators. We found them to be incredibly reliable and robust, and most importantly, very efficient at cooling, thanks to their high density, or in this case, ultra high density, fin count and core. It is much, much more efficient and will cool this engine better. It is a tight fit in here with that recirculated wastegate tube, Pete, so I think I'm gonna need your help here. We don't wanna bend any fins. Can I just quickly mention how great this engine bay is looking? And I also love the amount of space that we have to work here. It's just, it's, it's so nice. This has been a pleasure to put this turbo kit on. Uh, I'm gonna bolt on our tile 44 millimeter wastegate here. And thanks to somebody that knows how to weld and they've done their homework and our precision welders, look at this. This is gonna fit up just like that with room to spare. They're so, it's super close to the rad, but it can be close as long as it's not touching. And that's what we have here. This is perfection, guys. I'm loving it. Admit it, there were some of you that were ready to fire up the keyboard and type, you forgot the firing, you forgot the firing. But guys, sometimes we're, uh, we're just putting this stuff on for uh, mock-up purposes and to show you what it looks like before we go through the final assembly. So I'd say about 90% of the time we get everything right. And you know, the 10% we do screw up. You guys tell us and thank you for that. So, you know, keep, keep it coming. Keep us honest, boys. That's keep right. us honest. If you're trying to replicate this setup, uh, one thing to note is that the stock Evo 6 fan will not work in this setup. The compressor housing from the turbo does hit. So you can see we actually went to the SPAL one that we also had to do a bit of shaving of the rubber to get it like really low profile. But now you can see we do have good clearance there. Well, it was bound to happen. And that is we have run into what is a fitment issue. Uh, as you guys can see here, we have the lower intercooler pipe and it is banging against our down pipe Evolution Racing Spares, the way they make this, they actually have a different lower intercooler pipe, which we do not have. So I'm gonna have to get creative here and figure out how to make this work. And here is the solution. A bunch of vibrant parts out of the stash has created this. We've gone from a two inch up to the existing two and a half inch uh, intercooler pipe. And there you have it. We've got ourselves a lower intercooler pipe that fits up. We've got good clearance here. Moving on to the intake system here. And this is the intake that Pete built for the old turbo setup. And as you can see, if we drop it down into a position here where it would hook up to the tile blow-off valve. And by the way, this is a STM short route uh, charge pipe on the side. 
you can see down at the turbo, we are not in a good place here. So even with this coupler on here, there's just no way to make this bend here work. So we are, we're gonna have to do something to fix the intake. And uh, after having a look around, I think we've got something. In fact, I know we've got something coming in the mail that is gonna completely blow your mind. It's super rad. It is baller. You're gonna have to wait for it, but man, it is gonna be worth the wait. And this is not it. This is just your classic filter on a stick that we're gonna throw on here just in case we want to fire the engine up, have a little filtration on it. We are getting close, which means it's time to put motor oil on this. And uh, for initial startup and break-in, we're just using Valvoline conventional non-synthetic, non an A5W30, that's the factory weight for this engine. And the reason to use a, <laughs> just shot oil all over my face. The reason to use a non-synthetic is that it's good for your skin and it's also good for engine break-in because it's not quite as slippery or as slick as a synthetic. So it helps the rings bed in properly. And basically that's what you're doing with a new engine on startup and break in is you're trying to make a good seal between the ring and the cylinder walls. So we're not too concerned about protecting the bearings or anything like that at this point. We just want to help the rings bed in, conventional for that, and then we'll swap to a high quality full synthetic once it's broken in. So we are ready for not a first start, but to pressurize this engine and see if there's any leaks. That's where to start off with. We've got our uh, Pro Series XD battery, which isn't gonna be the one that lives here, unfortunately. We have a smaller one coming. We didn't buy one. I think we used it on the, the Celica Celica DP. I think we, did, yes. I think we, we did. stole it from there. So I've got all the, the batteries hooked up there for that. And now I wanna show you guys something because uh, this is gonna be reminiscent. This already brings back memories of the first time we started this car. This is our AEM CD5 digital dash that we installed in conjunction with a Link ECU. And let me show you guys the opening screen here. You ready for it? Look at that DP. Oh, yeah. How cool was that? Let me show you guys again. It, it pops up quick, so it's hard to, to get a good read, to, uh, a good look at it, but bam. Nice. That is the old logo there of the Evo 6 STI killer from our first original series. Uh, at this point, I am going to hit, this is our oil pressure here. I'm gonna cycle through the uh, the menus here. So now we've got oil pressure front and center and we're gonna crank this thing over a bunch of times until we get some type of oil pressure build up there. So uh, let's see what happens here. Oh, oh well, I forgot, that. so much for that. At this point, <laughs> well, that, that doesn't work, so we're gonna have to get the laptop out, plug the laptop in, and we can build oil pressure, see you that we're building oil pressure that way. We now have a big oil pressure digital gauge showing on our Link software here, so let us try this again. This is gonna take a little bit of time. The whole system does have to pressurize. Well, so we just referenced our old video and realized we had the exact same problem. And to remedy that, what we did is we put some compressed air down the dipstick tube while we cranked the motor, and that did help push the oil up and, and start building oil pressure. So that's exactly what we're gonna do again here. Pressurize. What we've learned is this engine, if not primed, uh, will not build oil pressure very easily and we just don't wanna keep cranking it. I, I feel uneasy about that. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna drain the oil out and we do have a pre-luber, this JEGS pre-lube system that we're gonna pressurize the oil and once we can see it up in the head, then we know we're, we're good. But the, the trick here is now, when we make a mess here, DP, uh, to catch this oil, bad. let's see. Oh, I got oh, it perfectly. Oh, ready? ready? What a pro. There you My go. God, man. Valve cover is off. We now have our turbo feed line hooked up to our JEGS oil pre-luber. Now what we're gonna do is put a bunch of pressure into it here, pump it up, and when I crack this valve, it's going to pressurize the entire oiling system. And as soon as we see oil coming up to the head, we know that the system is properly pressurized. Ready? Oh, yeah. You can hear the noises. You can hear the noises for sure. Noises are happening. 
Those are happening. Oh, yeah, there's oil coming up already. Look at this. Oh, it's oh. she's a squirter. She's a squirter, PT. There you go. See? That certainly works uh, much better than cranking it for 20 minutes. Yeah, you can see oil is starting to come up everywhere. And look, to confirm, we have oil pressure. We have a whopping 3.2 PSI going on right now. That thing is still uh, pouring fluid into the engine, but this certainly is a good sign. This means we do have some pressure building and you can still see it's, I've never seen this before. It's kind of funny. See this one little, maybe a pressure relief valve of sorts or whatever is, is still pumping out the fluid here. So things are still happening. Let's see what happens now if we crank. Ooh, look at that people, we got two PSI, 2.6. So that certainly does show that that is the, uh, the right way to go there to prime the oil system. So now we know that, and I, I just had a look underneath. There are no leaks, everybody. I do not see a drop of oil. Here's an install that I've been waiting to do for quite a while, and that is because we have here a Canadian-made exhaust system from Feli Built right out of Alberta, Canada. Proud Canadian product here. And this is a full titanium construction exhaust for the Evo 6. Uh, for somebody to be building exhaust systems for the Evo 6 is rare. And Feli Built is one of those few companies that is dedicated to the Evo craft. And this system here is gorgeous. The welds on it are superb, all titanium, high quality stuff. There's just so many small little details that I love about this system. I weighed uh, the entire system. It weighs just under 14 pounds. And it is a full muffler with a resonator, so it's not gonna be super loud, but it is going to have that nice titanium sound. You'll hear it once we get this thing fired up. I can't wait for that. This may not necessarily be the popular choice, but I specifically requested a catalytic converter from Feli Built for this project. I don't want it to stink. We want these cars to be proper street cars, which means they, they need to have catalytic converters. You can see they are using the good stuff. That is a G Sport by Jezzy, ultra high performance cat. These flow well, they're high quality. And the one thing I wanted to point out to you is the attention to detail that Felix, the owner, uh, certainly pays to his products. He really takes the time and effort. I don't know if you guys can see this, but he has welded just slightly the edge of the flange here, which gets rid of that like harsh transition here, which is a small little touch that I certainly appreciate and I'm sure a lot of you will as well. So far, I've been super impressed with this stuff. Here's a quick tip. When you're installing systems like this that have V-bands and slip-ons, you don't really want to tighten everything up until it's all installed. And you can see using your head as a stand also is very critical. This certainly is a unique exhaust tip. It's double walled and I really do like the way it comes down. It's not like thick all the way to the edge. It has a rolled thin outside tip and of course that titanium coloring on the end it looks really really nice and as you can see this is gonna fit up like this i am just putting the finishing touches on this exhaust system by wiping it down you got to make sure this thing is clean before you start it up because any fingerprints or whatever will leave marks so uh, felix recommends acetone and then methyl hydrate to clean it off and make sure it's perfect. Now, by the way, if you're interested in any Feli built exhaust systems, the US distributor Drive Theory is offering an 8% discount to anybody. So there will be a link in the description. Go check that out. Just getting a little CrossFit training in here, everybody. And uh, the real reason to do this is to pressurize your coolant system and see if you have any leaks before you fill it with coolant. So we'll pump this up. And then we'll see if uh, the gauge starts to bleed down at all. And if it does bleed down, then we know we've got a leak. We can trace that and hopefully fix it before we put any coolant in it. Well, looks like it's holding steady there, doesn't it? So I think we're good. Let's uh, put the coolant in it. Just using our airlift system here to suck all the air out of the uh, coolant system. You can see what it does is it actually collapses the rad hoses. So as you can see here, it is holding steady at, let's call that 28. HG. Oh, HG yeah. or whatever. Yeah, whatever, whatever it is. The units the vacuum. Are. So 
just like we confirmed with the other setup, we don't appear to have any kind of leaks in the system. We are ready to draw the coolant into the motor. And of course, for coolant, we have gone with Xerox by Valvoline. This is one of their two Asian vehicle blends. And if you look on the back of the bottle here, you can see it meets Mitsubishi ES6. 4217 standard, which is the standard for this engine. So this is exactly what we need for this engine. And to draw this coolant in from the bucket, it's as simple as just opening the valve here and the suction that's in there now is gonna draw all this coolant in. And for those wondering, there is water in this line, not air. Yeah, you we always get that question. Yeah, we did fill it with water beforehand. Distilled water too, everyone, so it won't cause any corrosion in the coolant system. So here we go. Look at that. One of the most satisfying things in the world. We are getting so close to firing this thing up. Last thing to install is our coil on plug setup. If you guys recall, we already had one for this car from MA Performance, but what ended up happening was we took that one to use on another build, our Patreon from uh, Evo 8 build from Robert. Uh, so I needed to source another one. This time I went with JD Customs. I certainly like their carbon fiber trim piece here a lot uh, better than the MA Performance one, which was just like a, a billet one that we had to paint. And look at that, it's gonna look so nice. Oh, drop that in there, put a couple bolts in, and we already have our plugs ready to go. So simple as that. It's that time, first start. My heart is pumping. I am a little nervous, as you always are with a fresh engine build. I don't know anybody who isn't, maybe somebody that's built 50 motors. <laughs> um, but I think we have everything. We've got power steering fluid, all the trans fluid, you know, diff fluid, everything's been filled up. Um, we have fuel, I heard the pump prime. So I think we're good. We have, let's see, we have ECU power here. I've got the laptop up so you guys can get a kind of eyewitness view as to what's gonna happen here. So, uh, yeah, DP, let's turn, let's, let's turn the key and let's All see what right. happens here. You ready? Good luck, everybody. Wow. wow. Look at that oil pressure right away, man. Yeah. 82 PSI Great. came up. Oh my goodness, unbelievable. That's a good sign, guys. Good sign. That is a good sign. You heard the lifters just there for a split second. Yeah. It was a good thing we, we oiled them up. It runs. Yeah. It runs. I don't hear any leaks. Running. Let's go. Uh, let's go around back and like listen to the. We got, oh, we got a leak. Never mind. Oh boy, do we ever? Oh man, it's coming out of the. Oh, shut her down, then. Oh boy. That's uh, suboptimal. That is not looking good, and it looks like it is coming from my favorite, my favorite spot. Uh, I, I suspect behind the crank pulley, the timing belt cover. Problem found, and it's kind of an odd one for me. This bolt hole here is the one that was leaking the oil, and uh, it is not a, a passage for oil. However, what's happening here is there are two oil passages that, on the block around this area right here. I looked on our old block, and because there's no uh, screw or bolt in here, what's happening is this is not pressure, this, there's no pressure on here, it's not tightened down, which in turn, that is causing it to leak after a while. So probably after it built up all that oil pressure, that 80 PSI, that's when it finally was like, okay, I'm gonna start seeping through here. So it's kind of a weird one, but thankfully this is somewhat of an easy fix. I'm just gonna put a bolt in here, torque it to spec, and we should be good to go. Now I am just torquing the original uh, tensioner pulley here for the balance shaft belt. We decided to run this because, well, I don't wanna put an aftermarket bolt in there and then worry about something coming loose or this and that. So this is the right way to do it. It's fine, it's not like it's gonna spin up, so uh, let's do this take two and see if we have any leakage from there. So here we go. We left everything off. Just wanna see now if there's anything that's leaking. Oil right. pressure is 75. Yeah. Yeah. And there seems to be a leak. So that is fixed 
fixed it. What I wanted to show you guys is, let's go around the back here for a second and listen to the exhaust system. We can't let this thing run long because there's no water pump on it, but let's have a quick listen. Oh yeah, that sounds nice and deep, just as I predicted. It's not gonna be raspy, it's gonna be a nice deep tone. Next up here, we are going to be having to break this car in. So I'm gonna turn this off. Now we are good to go. We don't really wanna run or idle this engine at this point. What we wanna do is get some load into it right away as per the HP Academy uh, instructions from the previous engine build that we did that we had good success with. So that's what we're gonna do. All right guys, that is gonna be a wrap on this one. It certainly wasn't without its drama. Of course, there always has to be a couple minor things, but it sounds like we've got ourselves a healthy running motor. In the next episode, things are gonna happen very quickly. We are gonna take this thing for its main voyage, do a break in and then head to the dyno. But before we do that, there's a intake that has just shown up and I'm gonna leave you with a bit of a teaser, which you can expect in the next episode. That's right, you see that? A little bit of carbon fiber. This intake is going to blow your mind. You will never have seen anything like it. It is wild. It is gonna level up this engine bay. So stay tuned everybody. The next episode is gonna be a great one.